folks, Lake Speed Jr. We're back here at EFI University. Good to have you back, my friend. Appreciate you letting me come back in. We got something to talk about today. It's kind of an interesting topic. You may not really think about, hey, you know, an oil guy talking about cleaning. True. But. Oil guys are usually messy in my experience. I'm, every, I'm really messy. Every time Lake shows up in my shop, it's a mess. Because <laughs> well, I have to clean up, though, right? That's See, right. that's how cleaning is related. So when I was going through my certified lubrication specialist training, there was a whole session about cleaning. Because, you know, you go, like, say, Timken, for example. The number one cause of premature bearing failure is contamination. Debris. So it's dirt, debris. So getting things clean is really important, especially in processing, right? For sure. Uh, you know, but different, different steps, right? Coatings and things like that. So cleaning really is a really big part of lubrication. Um, this little device right here is an interesting one because it's an ultrasonic cleaner. And I was actually using these way back in the day when I worked in the Melling, we were you know, painting cars that, oh, wow. uh, these were excellent at getting paint out of all the small orifices inside a spray gun so that it would spray accurately. For sure. Yeah. Uh, because you really can't get in there with a brush and get all that stuff as good as this thing can. Well, and even like sometimes you have parts that are pretty delicate that mm -hmm. you don't want to use mechanical scrubbing on. You know, exactly. I mean, I don't want to take a Brillo pad to my engine bearings. You know? No, no. So, so, don't want to so do that. being able to do it like this really makes it uh, not only convenient because you could put it in a walk away, mm -hmm. but also like better overall for the parts that we're talking about. Yes, it's definitely a lower impact in terms of potential damage to the part. And this is a small one made for something like, you know, a piston or bolt. And we got some rings here. So we're going to put a couple things in there and show you the results when we're done. But they also make full-size versions of this. Oh, I yeah. know uh, my buddy Jake Raby uh, and Charles Navarro, they both have s sizes. They can put full engine blocks in Yeah, there. I've seen giant ones. You could get in there like a hot tub. You know, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest doing that. <laughs> uh, but speaking of hot tubs and this, those are the, the four things that I remember from the cleaning uh, sessions was that it's time, temperature, concentration and agitation. Those are the four things you gotta keep in mind in terms of getting something clean. Sure. Right, so agitation, you know, that's like you're, you're scrubbing, right? Shaking it around. And that's what's kind of unique about this piece. We'll get back to that in a minute. But obviously, temperature, you can get something hotter. Sure. That's yeah. gonna help clean things off, the hot tanks and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. But also, uh, concentration. So, the solution you're using, what kind of solvent are you using, what kind of cleaning agent are you using, the higher the concentration, usually the better it's going to clean. Okay. So, and then obviously time, right? Sure. If you leave something in there to sit long enough, like you burn a pan cooking dinner, right? What do you do? You put some soap in it, some water in it, let it sit overnight in the sink, come sure. back the next day, you can scrape it right off. So you use, you didn't have a lot of temperature, right? concentration maybe a little bit, but it was the time factor. And so as your concentration and your agitation and your temperature go up, then the time you need goes down. Down, right. right? So that's exactly. great. So those are the levers to pull, right? And what's cool about this thing is that the agitation is actually ultrasonic sound waves. So basically extremely high frequency. Exactly. Okay. So it's basically oscillating, if you will, using that frequency to shake the molecules of the water. You can see the water like vibrating right. while it's running. So yeah, that's what it's doing. So the agitation with an ultrasonic is using those ultrasonic waves okay. to agitate the solution. And it has a heater built in. There so you, you can go. set the timer, you can turn the heat up, you can change the solution, right? So like the solution they provided with this one said it could even be from 5% to 30 percent yep the, on average probably 10 percent is what most people use right yes right? i saw you put the water in it and you set it to 10 percent right I did yes yes all right so 10 percent solution if you needed something that's more of a hard uh thing that was really stubborn real, real you know, gritty and greasy right, and yucky you could bump that concentration up a little bit to get a little better cleaning or just let it run longer right so, or you could turn your temperature up right you so could do all, those, all things. those things you're talking about we yeah. have control over with our with our ultrasonic cleaner right so and you may be wondering, okay, all right, that's great. Well, what does that have to do with high-performance engine building? Oh, a lot. Well, because cleanliness truly is next to godliness. Mm -hmm. You know, we even saw that when we did the Teardown Engine Performance Expo. That's engine, right. Yeah. Right, that we were in a rush. We were hurried against the deadline. And we were moving from the Yates' shop over to Jimmy's shop to get things done just because of parts and deadlines and all this. And even like Jimmy mentioned, said, you know, I wish we had more time to make sure that everything was as clean as it possibly was. 
Now, the interesting part, it doesn't look bad. No, it's fine. It's okay. But you, but could you can see those little areas, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. You could. You could. It shows up that it wasn't as clean as it could be. And, and, and also, that's, you know, how, how many times have we had parts where we're like, okay, I just came back from the solvent tank. I blew off some air. Put it in the engine, and we go. Wait, before you do that, let's take a look under like the microscope. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're like, "Oh my goodness, that thing is still filthy, right?" Right. And so even just dipping it in your solvent tank and wiping it off and blowing it off with air doesn't really do the job that you could do if you had more time and temperature and concentration and yep. agitation. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. So getting those parts clean is really important because that's just engine life. Yeah. If, if I'm wearing it out because I left a little bit of dirt in there. That just means that part's not going to live as long as it could have. Just a simple fact that you didn't clean it. And this is a super easy way to make sure those critical parts are 100% clean before you put it which, in the engine. Which really, in the long term, translates into dollars, right? How exactly. often do you want to have to replace your parts? How often do you want to pull the engine out and overhaul it, especially on a racing engine? And, you know, some of the supply chain issues, you might have to wait a long time to get the parts you need. If you get them cleaner before you put them in, they just tend to last longer. What I love about this is it's a put it in and walk away. Yeah. yeah I mean, that that's was right. the thing we loved about cleaning the paint guns. It's like, literally, we have a ton of work to do here. We got cars <laughs> that got to go to the racetrack. You're like, wait, take the thing apart, run a little bit of solvent through it just to clean it out, drop it in there. Well, just the think thing about it. And go away, and then you come back, and you can basically rinse it back out, put it back together, and off you go. Think, think about the average shop that doesn't have a ton of people working there. How much time do you spend just cleaning your parts. So right. getting an ultrasonic, you know, uh, cleaner like this, you just dump your parts in there and go off and do some other work and come back when it's ready. It's kind of like baking a cake, you know, it comes out and it's, it's ready to eat kind of thing. It's kind of like having an employee that's there to wash parts. Yes, absolutely. So just doing it for you, you know? Yep, 100%. So anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to take what we got here. We have a piston here that's got a little bit of carbon on it, right? Yep. This is one of your used race pistons. It is. Yep. All right. So what we'll do is we're going to put this in here. It's a super easy, by the way, right? Things are super easy to use. He's got the concentration in there. It's got a little basket that sits in here yep. where you can pull the basket out, right? And we can do a little hooks here, hook on the side. Yep. So we can put the piston in here. We've got a little nasty bolt, right? So we'll look inside there and see what it looks like, what it comes out. And then we've got a Napier ring that's brand new. Now, maybe it gets clean. Maybe it's already clean. I don't know. We're going to find out. Well, especially with a Napier ring, I think a lot of people are shocked when I take them and I show them a Napier groove under magnification. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many times you try to get it clean, that Napier groove is there to collect trash. Right. And that's what it does. It's going to have it. really is. So great. here's a used one that already has some stuff in it, and we'll check it out under the microscope as well. So All right. Here, we'll put this in here, right? It's got the little hooks. There it goes. Let's turn our little piston upside down to get the good part. In yeah, there. that's a good idea. Okay. All right, put the lid on it. All you basically do is, right, is just set the thing here. It's set to about 150, 150 degrees. degrees. So what we're going to do is it, Ooh. turn it to, we'll call it, what, 15, 10 minutes there? 10 minutes. No, let's, let's do 15 minutes. All right. Set it to 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, we'll see you guys in about, oh, 15 minutes or so. Okay, a little bit of time, temperature, and concentration later, we got some results. Yeah, and it was great. I was in there doing emails, and I just waited till the little thing, you know, ding. turned up. <laughs> yeah, a little ding, time, time's up. Now I come back, and I wasn't in there. My hands are clean. I wasn't in there, like, scraping with my toothbrush and stuff. So kind of nice. Pretty big improvement. Now, obviously, just in that short period of time, we're not right. ready to, like, assemble or engine with these pieces. Right. But, wow, like, pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah, it, it removed not all the carbon, but... Pretty much most of the carbon off this piston, which, you know, one thing we noticed, we were talking about this, that this is a vertically gas-ported piston. That's right. And so their weakness is building up a carbon in the gas port. So it's, it's nearly impossible to get in there and clean those perfectly. This is the perfect tool for cleaning vertically gas-ported pistons. Yeah, absolutely. It works out really nicely. You can just dump them in there. Like I said, you just come back later and now you're good. Done, right. Yeah. So even this direct injection piston in just 20 minutes in here, it removed a lot of the carbon. Really, yeah, I, I, I was looking for something that was really grungy and grimy, and so mm -hmm. I thought, you know, we have these DI pistons that we take yeah. around, and they tend to get really kind of carboned up and sooty just from all the sort of impin direct impingement of fuel. Yeah, like exactly. Everywhere. Yeah. Especially right so, here in the, in the little fuel bowl where it sprays yeah. in, it's supposed to send it out. It really cleaned it up pretty nicely. They, they get pretty crusty, so we decided, yeah. let's put this thing to the test, threw that in there. What was in there, 20 minutes? 20 minutes, yeah. Yeah, now it's, it's 
hot. You know, yeah, it's, it's warm. warm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed for how how good of a job that did. While literally, normally I would be scrubbing and, and you know brushing, but yeah. literally I was doing emails while we waited for it to get clean. I kind of like that. Right, and it gets all the grime and goo off. Right, kind of so the big stuff. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Like even you know this little bolt. Right, the only thing you see now is oh, there is uh, <laughs> thread locker in a there still. Bit of thread locker. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see that before because there's so much junk in there. Right, but now there's, that's the only thing left on there. So you know it's. Like I said, it's a really easy tool to use. Yeah. Drop in your parts, turn it on, walk away, do something else, come back, and you got clean parts, and so that's not too bad of a deal. When you buy one of those, these machines, what you're really buying is efficiency, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Now you can be focused on other things, and it's doing that job that otherwise you were going to have to do. So, yeah, I'm in. And all the controls are there, right? How much time, how much temperature, how much concentration, there it's all go. right there, and it takes care of the agitation for you. So. You do the agitation, when you hit the button, it goes. Pretty, Pretty simple. simple. Pretty all cool. Right. All right, well, go, go get yourself one, and before you know it, you'll be sending emails to you and having clean parts, <laughs> which, you know, it'll be great. It's all good. All Thanks right. for watching, guys. See you later. What a day, what a day, what a day. My, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen, I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars, we are not going to listen.